Where we're going is a little out of the way. Arvin, California. A typical western small town. Nice, normal bunch of folks. The city of Arvin is... Wait, where exactly is it again? Oh, it's right there. Nestled in the southern tip of the San Joaquin Valley, this agricultural town of just over 20,000 specializes in growing carrots, garlic, grapes, potatoes, you name it. But this story has little to do with produce. Let's hear from the mayor. Wait, that's the mayor? Yep, Mayor Jose Garola began campaigning for city council when he was just 17 years old, eventually winning the mayoral election at 23. Take it away, Mr. Mayor. Arvin is a predominantly agricultural community. A lot of the parents are field workers. They wake up early in the morning, they work all day. The risk and the challenge is that you have these kids that aren't necessarily always under adult supervision and sometimes tend to fall into trouble if they don't have anything positive to do. So with all that unsupervised time, what exactly did the youth of Arvin do? That familiar clickety-clack coming around the corner should give you guys a hint. What I like about skateboarding is skating is something that helps me and just clears my mind. It keeps me away from the drama and, and problems in general. It keeps you out of trouble. Whenever you skate, you subconsciously create goals for yourself. Honestly, peace. For me, uh, skating is peace. Back in 2004, the city recognized their passion for skateboarding and even built them a public skate park. Pretty sweet, right? We had this pretty much waste bucket of like plastic ramps everywhere. Oh, well, it still looks skatable. And it had all kinds of holes and nasty, it was rotten wood and stuff. Okay, maybe it's just that one ramp. Cracks with holes in, in some of the ramps. All right, it was horrible. So horrible, in fact, that in 2013, the city started removing ramps because the park became a major health hazard, which became a major bummer. When they took those ramps away, me and my friends, we would go to the Arvin Library and, and do all kinds of tricks. But then they would end up calling the cops and we would get kicked out. Some people would be like, you can't skate here. Yeah, we'll have to go somewhere else. Skating around Arvin, uh, I hated it, to be honest, because I always got kicked out at every spot. And when they told me to go to the skate park and they knocked it down, it was kind of like, what are you trying to say? Like, go to a rundown dirt field now? Or now a basketball court? Nobody's using the skate park now. That's where this guy came in. When I showed up, there was a couple of kids sitting on the deck of the ramp. Came up to them and I said, what's up with your skate park? And they said, well, we, we talked to the city about getting it fixed and they said no. And I said, well, that's not good enough. And so why don't we get you guys organized and see what we can do about making this really happen. What happened next was not only impressive, but also a testament to the drive to never give up, a trait which all skateboarders possess. As little kids, we're like, they didn't really think about it that far. We just want a new park. Well, Tony Hawk Foundation, they just told us, you guys have to do your part. And like, they just told us to come on showing up to the meetings and like prove to them that you guys really want this. Uh, the fact that teenagers sat through three full council meetings back to back really demonstrated their need to the city officials. The newly gained connection with the Tony Hawk Foundation attracted a ton of local buzz, as well as support from a handful of other local nonprofits, ultimately leading to a partnership with the California Endowment. Tony Hawk Foundation was huge. I mean, first and foremost, the financial support they gave and the model that they had for where they put those dollars. I mean, they look for on the ground advocacy and that's a fantastic model to implement. After years of meetings, fundraisers, and even more meetings, the new Arvin skate park was finally completed in the summer of 2017. We're here to celebrate today the work of a small group of young leaders. They took action and we're here today celebrating a beautiful state-of-the-art skate park because of them. And this is what happens when we work together, we listen to our youth, and when we do what we can to improve the community. Uh, God bless, thank you. We've been waiting for this for a long time and it's like really amazing that we finally got it. One, two, three. Action time! We're very, very thankful to the Tony Hawk Foundation. It's just very amazing to finally see it finished and seeing all the young people coming out here to play. The skate park is pretty much a blessing for us, for all of us. 
So the youth finally got their skate park, and months after opening, it's no surprise that it's become a main attraction for the city. It feels amazing. You don't even have to call anyone to go out skate. Everyone's already here. We have visitors from Southern California, Northern California. This has become like the place to go as far as skate parks. It's everything I wanted. Now we have Bakersfield people coming over here. We have so many other people coming to this park. People will be like, we didn't even know this town existed. I remember there was one person who was like, we thought it was the name of a store. But like, no, it's a, it's a town. This is just one of the hundreds of communities the Tony Hawk Foundation has assisted in creating safe spaces for kids to play, socialize, and be active. And we'll continue to help the youth in other communities that come together, like Arvin's did, in order to help put their towns on the map.